Strasbourg. Hello and welcome to Strasbourg for this month's European Parliament report. For this plenary session, I'm joined by three of our new MEPs, Kieran Malouli of Independent Ireland and the Renew Group, Cynthia Niwaraku of Fianna Fáil and also within the Renew Group, and Aona Reardon from Labour and the Socialists and Democrats grouping. That's grouping. This is the first session of the new Parliament after last month's elections. That's Kieran, you ran on an almost independent platform. I suppose your your grouping, your party at home, is Independent Ireland, and you were critical of government policy during your campaign. That was central to your campaign, and yet you find yourself now in a grouping along with Fianna Fáil MEPs. Was that your natural home all along? No, I mean I think when you when you look at the, what happened uh, initially, it was said that I would find no home, no grouping, and uh, coming to, to to Brussels and to Strasbourg. We sat down initially to look for uh, common themes among the parties there, and I joined the European Democratic Party within 10 days of arriving here, uh, principally because of their interest in my key issue, agriculture. One of the key ones, uh, Christine Singer, one of the MEPs from Bavaria, is teaming up with me on the Agriculture Committee. She will have a full uh, role. I will have a voting role when Irish I issues are, 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 are prominent, and, and that's one of the reasons we have that partnership. So the EDP come in to renew with 10 of us, 10 MEPs, alongside Fianna Fáil's four MEPs. So I see ourselves as continuing to pursue of my mandate there. There's no whip, as you know. There will be issues I will agree with in terms of uh, Fianna Fáil and others, but there'll be issues I will disagree with and I will vote against. And um, Aon, again, coming back to your campaign ahead of the European elections, Dublin was at the centre of that. You're a Dublin MEP, obviously. We've mm -hmm. seen more violence again on the streets of Dublin this week. How can you bring that mandate, the European mandate, to make Dublin streets safer? Well, I, I did feel that Dublin had gone into decline and the riots of last November proved it to me. And certainly living in Dublin is very difficult. The cost of living is very high. Housing is a huge issue. So from the beginning of all my contributions in my own group, the Social Democrats group, I've spoken about the, the three priorities in Dublin is housing, housing and housing. And, and that phrase has, has gone around and come back again uh, to me over the last number of weeks. It's been uh, a key plank of our discussions with other groups uh, as to what we need to do over the next five years. Housing has to be key uh, over the next period of time. It has been said, though, that housing isn't really a European concept. Well, they say that, but I mean, uh, the state aid rules, uh, state aid rules are, are, are something that the European Union absolutely can uh, affect. It does limit the local authorities' capacity to, to both build social and affordable housing. Uh, I think in a number of years ago, we would have said that health had no, had no role, had no European competency, mm -hmm. and then when the pandemic arrived, that all changed. So I think what we have to do uh, as a collective is to improve people's lives. And if you improve people's lives, then uh, the far right have no platform. And that's the key, that's key for me. I also want to bring the European Union closer to people in Dublin because far too often it's been perceived as being very far away and very remote from people's lives. So I, I really want to change that. Mm -hmm.